Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Relationships. How do you guys feel about an old tradition like asking for somebody's hand in marriage? For some it can mean a great deal and for others it doesn't really matter. The problem for OP is that her boyfriend and her dad are on opposite sides of that conversation. This one is from user throw away and panic. My boyfriend, male 25, won't ask for my hand and my dad, male 48, is staging a family boycott of my wedding. Is my boyfriend being selfish? I've been with my boyfriend, male 25, for three years. We both just finished school and are finally ready for marriage. He proposed last week and I happily said yes. I could not be happier. I love him and he is going to be an awesome dad someday. But my boyfriend is very new school and my dad is kind of old school. My dad is beyond mad that my boyfriend did not ask my dad for my hand before proposing. My dad said he was willing to hear my boyfriend's apology if my boyfriend formally asks for my hand at a dinner that my dad said he will pay for at the restaurant of my boyfriend's choosing. My dad feels like he is being very accommodating. He will bring my boyfriend's favorite wine to celebrate. I spoke to my boyfriend last night and he won't budge. He doesn't believe in that tradition. My boyfriend showed me an article online where a woman was stoned to death outside a courthouse because she married a man against her family's wishes. This just happened. My boyfriend, who witnessed his father be abusive and possessive with his mom as a child, has always felt strongly that women are not property. He thinks the tradition of asking for a woman's hand is repulsive. His point is that he's met my whole family and gotten to know them. He says they have always known his intentions and he never made it secret that he was in love with me and wanted to marry me and have children. He feels he has done enough to announce his intentions and all of them seem to approve of him. He says that at this point he only needs my approval to marry him and nobody else's. So, yesterday my mom told me that my dad, who is not even speaking to me because I won't set my foot down with my boyfriend, is calling the whole family and telling them to not attend my wedding. My mom says that my boyfriend is the one treating me like property by not letting me have a say in his decision to not observe a tradition that my two older sisters' husbands observed. I told my mother that I understand where my boyfriend is coming from and that I have decided to do away with the tradition of him asking for my hand. So my mother is obviously mad and said that I should be ready for serious consequences. I asked her and she would not say. But from talking to my sister, she said that they would blackball us from all family gatherings. My two sisters and my mom have told me my boyfriend is being selfish. The wedding is set for this year. I'm worried that nobody in my family will attend my wedding. Well, this is kind of taking it out of hand. I mean, it's your daughter and her wedding. You can't be that upset that you would rather have your daughter have a horrible wedding with no family because nobody asked you for her hand in marriage. That's being very obtuse, man. In this particular case, in my opinion, the only one who has a decision over this is the woman herself. Ultimately, she's the one who decides, right? So if she would like to observe tradition, she could ask her boyfriend, hey, could you ask my dad for my hand? Cool. If she doesn't, then it's okay as well. I don't think this is either the boyfriend's or the dad's decision. So sorry, guys. But then again, that's just my opinion. So how about we take a look at a few community comments and then an edit from OP before we move on with the update. Deleted says, quote, my dad feels like he is being very accommodating." End quote. No. Both he and your mother are being controlling and they are attempting to make you choose between your fiancé and them. Choose your fiancé. Otherwise, you're setting precedent for this type of behavior interference for the rest of your marriage. OP responds, This is what I'm afraid of. My fiancé and I don't practice Catholic religion like my family does. So, I wonder what will happen when my kids aren't baptized and all that. Suarez Biteguard says, Fine, go ahead and agree to your parents' Stone Age demand, but make sure they pay your fiancé your full worth in cattle and or loot. No dowry, no request for hand in marriage. If they want the old traditions, they can have all of them. M. Ratas says, Your family is being kind of 
rude. Threatening your boyfriend and your wedding because he doesn't want to do a tradition that he has seen as harmful is rather selfish of them. Your boyfriend is doing the right thing by not asking your father. More to the point, this could have some slippery slope stuff either way. If he caved into your father's demand, it could spiral into more demands and threats because your father would have power over your boyfriend, whether you want that to be the case or not. OP's edit. I'm getting some comments about my boyfriend asking for my parents' blessing instead of permission or hand. I just can't see the difference. There might be one, but I don't see it. Is there a big difference? No, I don't think there is. It's basically the same thing. It's asking somebody else for permission to get married or for approval of. Also, have to say that the commenters raise a very good point about power play. In any case, we're going to move on with the update to see how this story played out. The wedding went on as planned. My parents stuck to their guns and boycotted. One of my two sisters attended and is now happily blacklisted from our family. Nobody else from my entire family showed up, including my two brothers. The wedding was a little unconventional. My sister walked my husband down the aisle and then his sister walked me down the aisle. I wanted this because my sister-in-law actually introduced us and helped me get my first date with him. There was no question about who gives away the bride or even about objections. It was normal other than that. There has been no contact between me and my family other than my one sister. My mother has made it a point to send me a card every time they have a family gathering for holidays or birthdays at their house to let me know that my father says I'm not invited. I get one almost every month. I don't even read them anymore, I just toss them. I don't know why they keep sending them because I've made no effort to contact them and I live over three hours away so it's not like I will run into them by accident. The reason I came back to post this here is because some people here made a prediction that came true that they would come crawling back when we had children. I am now expecting our first child, a girl. She will be the first grandchild for my parents. My parents found out about the pregnancy a few months ago through a family friend. They didn't waste any time in making demands. Not requests, demands. My boyfriend and I are not religious, but I had a Catholic upbringing. I don't practice at all by choice. My mother called me back in April telling me that my father wanted our daughter's middle name to be his mother's first name. I said no. My father was listening in on speaker, so I went ahead and told them that they were officially uninvited from all birthdays, graduations, and any other important dates in her life. My father called me half an hour later, crying and begging me to come stay with them for the birth so my mother could care for me. I said no. He also said that he had already made arrangements so his priest could baptize her at his church but that I needed to agree to naming her after his mother if I wanted this to happen. He said he'd already planned a big celebration for the birth and the baptism that he was paying for. I said no to all of it. He went from meekly trying to sweet talk me to raising his voice at me and I hung up. He called a couple of more times to apologize for losing his temper and again begged me to reconsider giving birth at a hospital near them so they could visit us. He denied having any knowledge of my mother sending me cards to uninvite us to any family functions and even said that he specifically asked her to invite us but he was told I declined every time. He lets my mom do the dirty work so he can later hide behind her and deny he had any knowledge. He has done this since I was a little girl. He does this every time he wants to drop the hammer on somebody but be the good cop also. He'll never change. He denied having any knowledge of why anybody in the family missed my wedding. I told him our daughter would not be baptized or Catholic at all. No offense to Catholics. I told him he was too manipulative and controlling and I didn't want my daughter exposed to that. He's too toxic and just venomous. Coincidentally, the day of that phone call and for several other days, I got tons of calls and emails from my brothers, their wives, my sister and all my aunts. 
They all wanted to apologize for missing my wedding and all had specific excuses and wanted to make plans to be there for my daughter's birth. I banned them all from her life until she's old enough to decide for herself to let them in. My husband was a little surprised and not sure about banning everybody forever. He's more leaning towards supervised visits if they want to drive to us. My dad has been calling him like crazy, but we are a united front. My husband is deferring to me but giving me ideas as to how I can give a little if I decide to. But with my family, there's no giving a little, they want it all. For now, they're all banned. I will reconsider when the youngest of our children turns 18. Smiley face. For now, my dad will have to settle for sucking up to my husband while I stick to my guns. Unlike him, I don't mind owning my decisions even if it means I'm a bad cop. I'm not ready to give up a relatively drama-free, stress-free life to allow my dad and all his sheep back into our lives. OP respect especially about the one owning your own decisions if it means you're a bad cop. That is called accountability and it's fantastic. I gotta see if I can get in touch with your dad because I really want to ask him how he developed time travel because he really seems like he comes from the 1920s. All of these weird old traditions and the fact that he kind of controls the whole family, it's just super weird. But I guess that depends on the family. What do you guys think? Do you think OP's in the right here or is she in the wrong? Well, while you think about that, let's move on to the next story. When it comes to marriages and cheating, some people let it happen so that they can have proof for divorce. Others choose to fight and reconcile. However, in this case, OP got ahead of the whole situation. This one's from user Just Another Husband 77. I moved to nip an affair in the making and it worked. I learned a lot in the last couple of years. My wife and I have been married for a long time. Married at 19 years old, still married and in love at 51 years old. Raised three great kids to adulthood in that time. Great life together. Sometimes, however, I think someone can meet another person they just click with in an unbelievable way. I think this happened to my wife. We had moved a thousand miles away from our hometown for my work. She got a job at a hospital in the new town and hated the job. For the first three years there, she absolutely hated going to work every day. She'd cry regularly. I was there for her in any way she needed. I helped her with her resume because she wanted to find something else. I gave her a shoulder to cry on. I listened and sympathized when she vented. I love her with all my heart and will always be there for her. After about three years, they hired a new guy at her work. He did the same kind of work she did but for another department in the hospital. He's a really nice guy. I've met him a couple of times. Anyway, he was closer to all the BS they had to put up with at their jobs. He understood better than I could. He spent more time with her than I could. If you're employed full time, you spend more time with your job and co-workers than you do your family. That's a fact. He was instrumental in helping her turn the job around. He understood exactly what they were going through better than I ever could. Misery loves company and now my wife had company. They started working as a team and the job got better for both of them. I could see them growing closer professionally. But then it transcended work and they started growing closer as friends outside work. And we all know where that can lead. I started to become really concerned about this but never wanted to look like an insecure jealous husband so I let it go. They texted regularly and hung out together at work all day long. They were the only two people in their office. They shared an office. So they chit chatted all day. I could see their relationship growing every day right in front of my eyes. My wife and I are as close as any two human beings can be, but I saw that this relationship at work was starting to impact our me and you against the world closeness. There was a third person entering into my marriage, even though it was currently still at the very early innocent stages. I started to bring up that I was concerned about it and that I didn't like how she was acting around another man. That would get shut down on me. Don't be silly, we're just friends and co-workers. He has a fiancé. 
or he's the one person that has made this job bearable and you want me to ignore him? It was just a crappy situation all the way around. I really didn't know what to do. My own field is very specialized and lucrative. As luck would have it, or God stepped in, or karma, or fate, or the universe, whatever is your bag. I get a call from a headhunter. A place in our hometown was looking for a new C-level executive to run an entire division. Huge job, huge salary in our hometown. I really loved what I was doing in my current job and now my wife loved her job and her co-worker and we loved the new town. Usually, that would lead me to say thanks but no thanks to the headhunter. This time, however, I saw it as an opportunity to make a positive impact on my marriage. My wife couldn't argue the opportunity. It was huge and almost doubled my salary. Plus, we have family and friends back in our hometown. I could tell she was absolutely heartbroken over the potential of losing this new best friend that I know in my heart they were both developing real feelings for each other. I know in my heart that my wife loved this man. I know that she still loved me and I don't think she would have ever cheated or left me for this guy. But I know I was slowly losing her to him. She didn't act on anything but there was something growing between them. I could tell when we all got together that his fiance hated my wife even though they had never met before. So that told me that she could sense a threat to her relationship too and didn't like it one bit. So I applied, interviewed, got offered and accepted this job. In my heart I'd say only 10% of it was because of the opportunity and 90% of it was to get my wife away from her job and that person. We moved. She hated leaving that job and her buddy. I could tell she was sad and depressed over the loss of this other man in her life. I knew in my heart they were having a full on emotional affair even if both of them were not aware of it. A lot of times that is how these things start. One or both parties aren't even consciously aware of what's happening until it's too late and they've ruined some lives. I know this might not be an ideal way to handle such a situation, but it worked. My wife found a new job back home. We're back in our old social circle of friends and family. For a few months, they would message on Facebook occasionally. Nothing bad, she'd always show me, but they were maintaining their connection. But that stopped months ago. Out of sight, out of mind. They don't communicate at all anymore. He has since married his fiance and my wife and I are very happy back home again. I could literally feel the change and one day while we were sitting on the couch watching Fixer Upper, her head was on my shoulder. She looked up and said, I love you so much. I know for a while in a city we used to live in, I wasn't being the best partner but I was so miserable in my job and part of me blamed you for moving there. The co-worker, the other man, was really like a wartime buddy where you share the same horrible experience with so you start bonding with them. But in retrospect, I think I was wrong and I shouldn't have done that. I'm so sorry if it hurt your feelings. I'll never do anything like that again. You're the love of my life. All's well that ends well. I love my wife with all my heart. She loves me. We'll be together until one of us dies of old age. There's a good chance I would have taken this job anyway because it's such a good opportunity. But at that time, that's not why I took it. I took it because I had a threat to my marriage, the thing that is most important to me in life. And I saw an opportunity to remove the threat from the equation. I took that opportunity and won't ever apologize for why I did it. OP, the reason why I like your story so much is because you did something. You didn't feel betrayed because she was having like an emotional affair or messaging too much with somebody so that you would let it happen. You actually did something about it. Yes, you were very lucky that it was a job that would take you out of town and, you know, take him out of sight. But still, bottom line is that you did something about it. You didn't take it lying down. So, awesome man. And now we're going to continue with a short update from OP that tells us a lot more about what he's learned in this time. Far too many posts to respond. My wife and I are reading through this thread together. We do everything together. We're a team. She wanted me to add for anyone that might be in her shoes that sometimes you really don't see things like this coming. But if you're not vigilant, 
you may end up ruining the best part of your life. She's as happy as I am with how everything turned out. We're not really religious people, but I'd be lying if I didn't say that this situation didn't make me question if there isn't someone out there watching out for us. And to be aware when God, the universe, whatever presents a solution to a problem, don't ignore it. I do know that I was extremely lucky that this opportunity came along. I really didn't know what to do. I felt so helpless. That doesn't happen for a lot of people and my heart breaks for them. I'll never stop being thankful of how lucky I was. There were a lot of assumptions made in this thread about me, about my wife, and about our whole lives together. Some good, some bad, some downright nasty. I understand that you're only getting a tiny slice of our lives. I assure you, we're happily married 32 years now and will be married till death do us part. Hopefully, even beyond that. Would either of us do whatever is necessary to protect our marriage from any and all negative influences in this world? You betcha. My wife tells this story more than I do. She has told it to our adult children as a cautionary tale. She has said if the situation was reversed, she'd do the exact same thing. I wouldn't be angry if she did. I've had several close female friends over the decades we've been married. When my wife picks up a vibe that one of these women may have desired more than friendship, she voiced her concerns. A couple of times that was met with, don't be silly, we're just friends. In retrospect, my wife was not being silly. Those friendships could have been a threat to the marriage, but we'll never know because we nip them in the bud and put our marriage first. All I can wish anyone here is to find the same kind of happiness my wife and I share. It's wonderful, and I hope if you don't already have that, that you find it. Peace. OP, thank you for your post. It's very inspirational, and I quite like it. I like the fact that you say that you put the marriage first. I wonder how many relationships go bad because somebody cheats because they didn't talk, because they didn't put the marriage first, and they just felt lonely or isolated and acted on that. So thank you. You've given me something to think about. What about you guys? And so we've reached the end of the video. I truly hope you guys liked it. If you did, go ahead and click like. Of course, don't forget to subscribe and click that bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a new video. Also, here are more videos from my channel that you might enjoy. And having said all that, I will see you guys on the next video.